What you guys got another video just install Linux. That's what I hear all the time. And of course, it's normally people that are just trying to get people to go over to Linux and ditch Windows. Unfortunately, when I say things like not everything works on Linux and I just can't seem to use Linux on a daily basis, you'll always get someone putting up comments with a clown face saying you're a clown you're this you're that god knows what else and i'm not going to get into a big massive debate about linux and windows and what's best because at the end of the day i use all operating systems and i really don't care what uh, people use but let me just tell you when someone tells you that linux is not for them and they've tried it and it just doesn't work and then you'll get a Linux user in the comments section saying something on the lines of, oh, be more specific on what doesn't work so we can see what it is. You call yourself a power user and yet you're not explaining what doesn't work. So in this video, I'm going to give you my personal experience with Linux and some of the pitfalls of Linux for me. And it's not trashing Linux, so don't start going in the comments, acting like a child. I'm just telling you that it's not for me. I've tried. And I don't want to make compromises to use an operating system other than Windows. Windows is the best operating system, period. Yes, we all moan about it because we want to see it better than what it is right now. And it will come around at some point. They'll either make a new version of it or it may get worse. Who knows? But at the end of the day, when you've been using Windows for as long as I have, it's very hard for people to change an operating system and completely transition over to something like Linux. Now, Linux Mint is a perfect operating system for a lot of people. There'll be a lot of people here that are probably using Linux Mint right now or Zorin OS or any of the other distros out there that you can use. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it works for you, great. But remember, the world doesn't revolve around you and lots of people have different needs and requirements. For instance, I do not want to use LibreOffice. I just don't want to use it. I would prefer to use Microsoft Office. And that's just because I've been trained and using Microsoft Office for many, many years. It's the industry standard. If you go to any company, a lot of companies are using Microsoft Office. It's just the way it is. And do you think the whole world's going to start retraining all of its users that use uh, Microsoft Office to start using LibreOffice? Of course they're not. Because it's part of the industry, it's what's used on a daily basis. The majority of people use a Windows operating system, not Linux. Linux pays a small part when it comes to desktop computers. Windows computers have always been up the very top and they have been for some time, and they probably will do for many years to come. And Linux is sitting around waiting for this big uh, change to come in the future. And it's just not going to happen overnight. It will take many, many years. And believe you me, I've been doing this game for a long time, and Linux has always been way down there. Now, let's get the giant elephant out of the way, which is gaming. This is one of the biggest problems that Linux face. Yes, it's come a long way, but a lot of the key games that people play every day online just do not work on Linux. And if you can get them to work, you have to jump through multiple hoops and tweaks and God knows what to try and get it working on that system. And it's normally games with anti-cheats. Battlefield 6 will not work. Valorant will not work. Destiny 2 Escape from Tarkov, Apex Legends, Fortnite, PUBG, Call of Duty Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege. Rockstar games like GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 often fail because of its issues with the proprietary launchers. And these launchers are EA, Ubisoft and 2K. Some of these games just don't seem to work. They're problematic with those particular launchers, but you might be able to get around with some of these uh, by using uh, tools like Proton. And it's modern games like Battlefield 6 that just don't work on Linux. And this is really 
problematic because a lot of the games we're talking about here are all AAA listed games that people play on a regular basis and they just simply don't work on Linux. And that's one of the biggest problems. So if you're a gamer, Linux might not be for you. And there's quite a few other games that just simply don't work on Linux. And I don't want to sit here bashing Linux about what games don't work on it because there's loads of games that do work on Linux. So I think what it comes down to is it depends on the games that you like playing. And unfortunately, a lot of the games that I like playing just simply don't work on Linux. So do your own research and find out what games you play all the time. And if it's on the list of it doesn't work, then unfortunately, you're not going to be able to play that game on Linux. And if you're not a gamer, then it's not a big problem for you and Linux might be for you. So let's move on to the software that I use. I use Camtasia Studio. This doesn't work on Linux. And it might be easy for people to say, hey, just use, uh, you know, DaVinci Resolve. But what if I don't want to use DaVinci Resolve and I want to use Camtasia? I use a lot of their software. And unfortunately, this is just not compatible with Linux, as you can see here. And it might be OK for someone who's a Linux user to then jump in the comments section and just demand that you just change to another uh, type of software to be able to edit your videos or screen capture but people just don't like change. And this is the thing, you can't make people want to change the software that they've been using for many, many years. What about QuickBooks? I use QuickBooks. That doesn't work on Linux. And I've been using QuickBooks for many years. And Linux may have an alternative software to QuickBooks that you can use. But I don't wanna make sacrifices for every piece of software that I'm using just to use Linux. And you've also got software like this one here, TurboTax. This is another one that a lot of people use in the States. It doesn't work on Linux and there might be alternatives, but these are the main key software that people do use for their tax returns. And most accountants will accept programs like QuickBooks and returns from them. Then there might be other applications you can use for that, but I just simply don't want to change it. Also, Autodesk is another particular type of software, any type of uh, CAD software just doesn't work with Linux. And a lot of companies will use this type of software. And unfortunately, it's just not going to work there. So if you're one of these people that use these types of software on a daily basis, then Linux is simply not going to be for you. Now, they might have alternatives, like I've said before, but these are all industry standard types of software that people use on a daily basis. Lots of music software just does not work on Linux. This is another one that doesn't work on Linux, which is widely used by a lot of people. And it sounds like I'm bashing Linux, but I'm not. I'm just literally pointing out in the comments. Sometimes I don't want to get into debates or arguments or even explain myself because it always ends in an argument. So this is the reason why. And there's lots of other software that just doesn't work. SolidWorks doesn't work on Linux. This is another widely used piece of software that is part of an industry standard that people use, and it's not compatible with Linux. And there's loads and loads of more software. CorelDRAW, which is another particular popular software that people use on Windows. And again, you've guessed it, it is not compatible on Linux. And again, a lot of people have shouted out and say, you can use alternatives, but you're now making sacrifices to use another operating system. Yes, you might be getting rid of telemetry and whatever else it is you're giving up, but you're giving up a lot of what you've learned over the years for something that's totally inferior to the software that you've been trained for. Smart Draw is another popular piece of software. No one will be able to use this on Linux because it's just not compatible. And I know a lot of people might be shouting in the comments section after this video, but a lot of you guys have asked me to give you opinions on things. And there's loads of other things I can sit here all day shouting out from the rooftops and telling you it just doesn't work. And I don't want to do that. So Adobe products is another one. I use Photoshop quite a bit. I use Lightroom. I use a lot of other particular types of Adobe suite. And none of this is compatible with Linux. And I see a couple of comments where people are saying, just use GIMP and use DaVinci Resolve for your video editing. 
you got Premiere Pro there I use as well sometimes. Now DaVinci Resolve does actually work on Linux and it is a very good, powerful piece of software. But again, what it comes down to is choice, whether you want to start to use different types of software just so you can use Linux. And that's entirely up to you. I like DaVinci Resolve. I think it's pretty nice piece of software. Unfortunately, I'm so used to doing it my way. I do sometimes video edit in DaVinci Resolve, but not all the time. There's certain things in it I like to do with DaVinci Resolve. And there's some things I like to do most of the time in Camtasia Studio. And there is more advanced stuff I like to do in Premiere Pro. Now, I've read also that DaVinci Resolve can't handle H.264 or even AAC media. So bear that in mind. There is some little pitfalls that you have to find out for yourself. And if you look at the comments section of any tech channel, they will tell you that it's perfect and there is no problems with it. But there's quite a few little niggly problems with Linux, just there is with Windows too. So take that into account as well before you make the transition over and make sure it does everything you want it to do and make sure you understand some of the sacrifices you might have to make when using Linux. Now, of course, you can use Darktable for Lightroom and Inkscape for Illustrator and other applications like Master PDF or Sterling PDF for Acrobat uh, and things like that. So just bear in mind, you're going to have to find alternative software inside the software manager if you want to use uh, the alternative software like GIMP instead of Photoshop. Now, my argument there is why are you going to spend all your time training in GIMP if you're looking to get into uh, this particular type of work? Because no one is going to recognize GIMP as a industry standard software. So bear that in mind. There is other software that you can use on Linux as well, like Handbrake and other types of software as well that will do like a Natron, I think it is for After Effects and things like that. So just bear that in mind. Uh, go through here and have a little look and see whether it's something you can adapt to. DLC and all the other usual stuff should work. Audacity, if you use that software, should work as well. And here is another piece of software, which is a pixel-based image manipulation program, which is pretty good as well, which you can use. And some of the workarounds are ridiculous from Linux users saying, just use VirtualBox and put Windows on it and you can install all your Windows software on there and use it. Well, what's the point of using Linux if you're having to use Windows inside of Linux? It's ridiculous. And then you'll get the dual booters saying, yeah, well, dual boot into Windows to do your gaming and to do your other types of software. Well, majority of the time you're going to be in Windows. So what's the point of using Linux? Dual booting is not using a new operating system. You've still got one foot in Windows. So... If you want to make the switch to Linux, you either make a clean break and go over to Linux, in my opinion, and start using it. Or if you are going to be using Windows and Linux together, then what's all the point of just install Linux? Because you're still using Windows. And your argument just doesn't stand for how good Linux is if, it, if you're having to still use Windows to do a lot of the stuff that you just can't break away from. It shows you how good Windows is. And of course, they tell you that hundreds of thousands of people have actually gone and jumped ship to Linux to make it sound like lots of people are heading towards Linux. And when you look at the stat counter, it just doesn't show it. It just shows 2.94%. That's actually dropped by quite a bit. It was around, you know, four and a half, four and point three or something like that at a time. But now we're at 2.94. It's actually going down. And of course, that's just the way it is. Linux goes up and down with users all the time. People try it and they go back to Windows. That's what happens. They just can't seem to make that switch. And Linux has been doing this for many, many years. And Windows has always had the monopoly over all of the other operating systems. So it doesn't matter what operating system you use, whether you use Windows or Linux or OS X or Mac OS, or whatever, Chrome OS, it really don't matter what you're using. If you're happy with it and it does everything you need it to do, then good for you. Continue to use that operating system. 
But you've got to remember, you can't tar everyone with the same brush. Not everyone is going to be able to use Linux as a full-time main system. They may have proprietary software that they need to use. And yes, there's workarounds to use, but most people that use Linux have still got one foot in Windows because they just can't seem to let go of Windows. There might be the people out there that are using Linux on a daily basis and they're happy with it. And they then go and jump into the comments and say, just install Linux, assuming that everyone is going to be using the computer the way they use the computer. And lots of people have different types of needs for computers. And unfortunately, just Linux just doesn't cut the mustard for a lot of people. And they are forced to use, uh, you know, Windows on a daily basis. Now, there's other little quirky problems like the HDMI 2.1 is not supported for AMD systems. And it's due to some sort of legal reasons uh, for it, I think. But at the end of the day, there's lots of little things like this you just need to have a look at. So when people get in the comments section and cause massive arguments and debates about Linux and Windows, it's pointless. Just use what works for you. And if Linux works for you, then good for you. Don't become a hater in the comments and start trolling on every video of Windows. And don't be so sensitive. If you're a Linux user and someone says something in a negative way, then just take it with a pinch of salt. There's plenty of things you can say about Windows that's not perfect. We know. I broadcast it on my channel all the time about some of the problems that's happening with Windows. It's happening on all operating systems. Linux is not perfect and neither is Windows. Now, before you tear me a new one in the comments section, this is not about belittling Linux at all. And this is not about showing all of the flaws of Linux because there's plenty more. You can do this all day long and you can do the same thing with Windows. This is just to show you some of the reasons why people can't transition over to Linux and why they're stuck with Windows. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.